Hello everyone, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. I'm Blake Rudis with your free tutorial Friday. Today I'm going to talk about shadow noise and highlight blowouts. These are two, two of my biggest concerns with uh, tone mapping, especially in photomatics. Um, well, it is kind of a pain to get these highlight blowouts and shadow noise, it's still not worthy enough for me to drop using photomatics as my favorite HDR tone mapping program. Because in post-processing, you can really easily fix the shadow noise areas as well as these highlight blowouts. So let's first look at the shadow noise. So the first thing we want to do is select the shadows. So go to Select, Color Range, and Shadows. Pretty easy to guess that one, huh? And now press OK. So that's going to give you a selection of what where your shadow areas are. And this is going to be the main concern of where your largest amount of noise is going to exist. The, the noise likes to creep in the shadows. It's like a pedophile. It's pretty gross. So let's go ahead and press Control J to duplicate those shadow areas. Once those shadow areas are duplicated, we can go ahead and go to Filter and go to Noise and go to Dust and Scratches and fix that by one pixel. So let's zoom in out so you couldn't really see what was going on there. So now that we're zoomed in, we can see that I have some broken pixels on my camera. But um, when we deselect that layer we just dust and scratched, it's cleaning up a little bit. It's not the best, but it does a pretty good job of cleaning up that pedestal and making it look a little less like sandpaper, as well as the carpet. However, I think it could still use a little bit of noise reduction. So instead of going in and doing another one pixel of dust and scratches because it tends to be a little bit um, abrasive. I'm going to go ahead and go to filter and go to noise and go to reduce noise. Most of the times, I'd say nine times out of ten, dust and scratches will give you a pretty decent um, product with your shadow noise reduction, unless you went crazy with your tone mapping and you really need to reduce that noise. So let's go ahead and put our strength at about 4 because we want to do a mild treatment of noise reduction. We're going to preserve our details about 50%, reduce color noise about 50%, and let's keep sharpen details at about 30%. Press OK. So let's see how that fared us. Pretty well. It might be a little too strong. You know, you always want to look at those other areas in your photo where, where the shadow noise might exist. That's going to be in some of the details. See if it ruined the details. If it didn't ruin the details in anything, then we can pretty much say that that was a pretty safe bet. It did hit this one pretty hard over here, so we could always mask that area out. Um, press B for brush, uh, D for default colors to default back to white and black. Go to black and paint out the artifact that is in the corner. If it's too strong of a noise reduction, you don't have to start over, just lower the opacity on that noise reduction slash dust and scratches that we just did. Pretty easy, huh? So those little pixel guys can go away. You can use the stamp tool to get rid of those. That's in a whole other tutorial though, because we're going to move right on to highlight blowouts. And one of my favorite cool new tricks that I kind of accidentally taught myself by playing with the level slider, sliding it back and forth. I don't want to save this because I've already done this. Okay. So here are highlight blowouts, these areas right here. I do not like highlight blowouts at all. My eye goes straight to these highlight blowouts. I see it a lot in HDR photography after the tone mapping is done. It's even in regular photography, but it really presents itself when the tone mapping has been completed with HDR photography. So in order to find these blowout areas, because sometimes they're, they're tricky, they exist in these, uh, I mean, they're usually blaring right in your face, but other times you miss them. So let's get a foolproof way to find out our, where our highlight blowouts exist. Because right, as of right now, I'm going to say that's one, that's one, that's one. That might be one, but let's check it out. So let's go to Levels. And uh, sometimes when I get bored in Photoshop, when I'm really trying to figure out something new, uh, I end up just sliding sliders and moving things around. And when I was doing that, helplessly moving the level slider back and forth because I didn't know where to go next, I noticed that this was bringing out all of these highlights highlight blowouts as I moved it back and forth. Sorry if I just made someone seasick. As I'm moving it back and forth, I noticed that these highlight blowouts were starting to kind of push themselves right in my face. So those sure enough were highlight blowouts. 
but it's very simple and very easy to fix. So the first thing we want to do is take our background layer or the layer that you are trying to uh, reduce the highlight blowouts on and duplicate it by pressing Control J. Once that's duplicated, we're going to use the patch tool. The patch tool is found here with all of your other healing brushes. Um, select the patch tool and hover over an area and you draw over these areas and you're kind of making a selection. That's what it is. It's a selection tool. So make a selection and then make sure your patch is set to source and move this patch up and grab that area up there and when it comes down it's going to take the area that you're patching and blend it with the area that you're patching it with to make it look a little bit more realistic. So let's look back at our, our levels again. Okay, so we can see we still need to do a little bit more, but that's a fine. So to get rid of that selection, press Control D for deselect, and then reselect this area, and then press and hold Shift, and start selecting all of your other highlight blowout areas. We're just going to collect all of them right now. Tell them to go away. Get rid of your levels, so you can see what it is that you're patching move this down or up or wherever you want to take your sample from you can go all the way down here if you want it doesn't matter to me but I'm gonna go right below it in an area adjacent to it okay so turn our levels back on and you can see that we're pretty much all gone with our, our highlight blowouts I don't mind those little guys too much they don't really bother me so if there's some down here too but these are in the landscape um, and they present themselves pretty pretty vibrant but Let's see what we can do about them. So we're just going to select these guys. Sometimes the patch tool doesn't work the greatest. Move this down. I can see we're probably going to have a problem with that um, sidewalk. Press Control D. So we might need to go ahead and mask out an area. Let's take your uh, mask tool and mask out. the sidewalk to make it look more realistic and you can switch back and forth between your white and your black by pressing the X button and that doesn't look too bad let's see if we can get rid of this one too I'm just gonna get rid of this guy right here this big one the areas that it's showing you where your blowouts are are existing in that color so that's existing right in the reds make sure we're not on our mask layer because I have my mask layer selected move on down and let's see I did a pretty good job we'll just leave it at that because I don't want to get rid of these there's actually detail there so it did a pre pretty decent job of removing those uh, blowouts you can see if we deselect this layer and then reselect it it's doing a pretty pretty decent job but it's a little too unrealistic looking um, you know you can see that there were those areas there before so just lower the opacity on a little bit to bring those areas back, but not make them vibrant and blowing people's eyeballs out. So you can see if we go back to our levels, we don't have blowouts anymore. It looks as if there's detail there as opposed to being information that does not exist because of its high blown out nature. So when we deselect our blowout fixed layer and reselect it. You can see that it's doing a pretty darn good job of getting rid of those highlight blowouts. So that was the uh, pretty easy crash course on um, removing highlight blowouts as well as shadow noise. There are probably 150,000 different combinations, I might be exaggerating there, of ways that you can reduce these areas. I'm just showing you one. I'm just showing you mine. I have to throw that in there because someone's going to say something about it. This is just my way of doing it. There's tons of other ways you can go about doing it. And if you if your process works for you, then go right for it. But this is my process, and I actually like it a lot. So I hope that helped you. Um, if you ever want any tutorials in the future, go ahead and email me at everydayhdr at gmail.com. And uh, I'm more than welcome to help you in any way, shape, or form that I can, whether it's photo-related or if you just need someone to talk to. I'm not a therapist, but I, I can listen to you if you need, need that. Okay, have a great weekend and uh, happy HDRing.